Hello and welcome to You Talking to Me. The refugee crisis has raised tensions between EU member states. The southern countries like Greece and Italy are blaming the northern countries not to help them with the mass of refugees coming through the Mediterranean Sea and northern countries such as Germany and Austria who are hosting the most of the refugees are blaming the southern countries not to step them arriving to the borders. So there are also the question of the transit route through the Western Balkans which are reviving tensions between the countries and the European Commission will also blame all member states not to implement the measures agreed last September, especially under the relocation scheme. So to debate on this blame game between all EU member states regarding the refugee crisis, I have the pleasure to welcome a Slovenian member from the EPP group, centre-right group. Hello and welcome, Mr. Frank Bogovic. Thank you for the invitation. And Mr. Eugen Freund, you are a member from the Social and Democrats Group and from Austria. Yes, that's right. Good morning. Good morning and welcome both of you. So, so, so far, 147 refugees has been relocated from Italy and Greece out of 160,000 refugees agreed under the relocation scheme. So this is far from the total amount we have to reach in two years. So do you think, Mr. Bokovic, is the Commission right to blame all member states not to implement the relocation scheme? I think that uh, the most important of this problem is uh, how to manage we all this problem and how to find the solution. At the end, uh, we know that uh, there is not a question about 160,000 uh, refugees or in immigrants. There is around 1 million. And there are different... That was the number first agreed from Yes, I Greece understand, but the, the whole amount of people in you, on Europe uh, is much, much bigger. So, uh, for my opinion, uh, this number, uh, which are uh, ruled through European Commission, it's n not, not a problem. For Slovenia, this is between 600 and 800 people uh, who should be relocated on Slovenia in two years, and I think that, that it's uh, normal. But uh, unfortunately, with those numbers, we will not solve the whole amount of the, of the problem. Mm. Mr. Um, Freund, do you think Austria has to be blamed as the other countries, because Austria is hosting the most refugees uh, in Europe? But um I think we have a problem of extraordinary dimensions, and we, de we do not react in a way that would warrant this problem of extraordinary dimensions. We have tiny little solutions, country by country, but there is no overarching European solution to the problem. And I'm still waiting after four years, more than four years of the war in Syria, where it was obvious that something will be happening, that the European Union has to react to that. And when I say European Union, one has to be careful not to put all these institution in, into one, uh, institutions into one pot, because I think that the Commission has done a relatively good job, and the European Parliament, and I hope you will agree, we have done what we could do in order to push those who did not do enough, and this is, this is the Council, you know. Mm, but pushing, it means, I mean, it seems that it's not enough that by pushing and also, I mean, member states are still blaming each other, so the southern countries blaming the northern ones and the opposite as well. So how do you, what do you think about this, this feeling of blaming each other instead of just resolving the refugee crisis altogether? Mr. I think that Bokovic. I think there is no need to blame each other. At that moment, Europe pay the price of wrong foreign policy all around the world for the last 15 years. And the price comes in Europe in autumn 2015 for the problems which, was, uh, which were made from Americans, from Russians, from big interests. And uh, during this wrong foreign policy, we destroyed many countries. Afghanistan, Libya, Iraq, uh, Syria, and we didn't act at that time what was, it should be necessary. Mm -hmm. and, I think it's, yeah. And now, and now I think that it's, uh, it's uh, necessary to find the solution of this problem 
also on the world level. It means that there should be also involved United Nations and start to fight for only self-interest of some country and start together work in Syria, stop the war in Syria, find a solution, an agreement with Turkey, with Jordan and Lebanon, uh, and at that time uh, pay also for these problems as uh, is there is a solution for Europe. And during this time, not okay. blame each other, but manage this problem on the way we, 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 which we can. Mr. Bo, yeah, Mr. I, Frunch, I don't think it's so something. much uh, the wrong foreign policy of Europe. I don't think Europe uh, can be blamed for the war in Afghanistan. But what I criticize and have been criticizing all along is no European foreign policy. You know, we have to... I, I speak as a, about wrong world policy, world foreign policy, policy okay. between big but, interests. But the European policy, I mean, we have 500 million members here in the European Union or in Europe, mm -hmm. and there was pr practically no European foreign policy. And I have been asking ever since I became a member of the European Parliament that the European uh, diplomatic core has to be has to present a robust diplomatic initiative now mm. particularly for the middle east and even even more so for Syria. Okay, coming back to uh, the relocations and uh, countries such as Greece who are facing the, this inflow of uh, refugees coming to the sea, uh, we have a recorded question from Stavros. He's from Sky Radio and he's a Greek member of Uranet Plus Partners. We listen. In Greece, we consider that we are stuck in the middle of this blame game. Our country is debt-stricken, with over 700,000 refugees having crossed the borders of the country since the beginning of 2015, and we have only received up today 5.9 million of extra European funds. The Greek government is now asking for a flexibility on its tight fiscal program in order to deal with the crisis, but the Commission, and Mr. Moscovici has stressed this in his recent visit to Greece, insists to keep the two apart. Would you call for more flexibility or not due to the pressure of migration flows on economic programs, and would you see this in other countries to be applied to? Mr. Oh, Mr. Fringe, okay, no, you want to start Greek, it. Greece has to be helped and has to be helped in, an, in a way that goes More much... More than the others? More because than the of others the because, of the, because of the geographical location. You know, Greek is, Greece is the neighbor of Turkey where most of the refugees from Syria are coming from. So we have to help them and also Italy in, in the case of the North African mm. refugees. I mean, they have to be, we are talking about hotspots. I've been talking about them for half a year now and I don't see any hotspot yet. I mean, mm. where is it? Where is it? Yeah, yeah. I'm Mr. Sure, I'm sure you... that this solidarity between European country should account this what happened, what is happening in each country. And in this case, Italy, Greece are the first income country, and the price of this is the higher. And for my opinion, the sure that all countries should be aware, should pay for this, and uh, this role of solidarity is first in the, in this this case. Mm -hmm. And that's I, I agree. And there is not a question about fiscal economy and fiscal measures, there are much bigger problems than uh, fiscal measures. I'm, I'm mm, but they say, the yeah. I mean, the commission yesterday, the, the interior minister reminded that they will give more support to Italy and Greece, assistance support for the hotspots, and the hotspots needs to be fully in function by the end of the month. Do you think this is realistic? I don't know whether it's realistic. I mean, they could have started long ago. I mean, because, as I said, they have been talking about it for a long time. So who has to be blamed there, then? Well, it's basically uh, the European countries, the European that's that's made uh, the European Union that's made up of the European countries. Everybody is, as you said, and as the title of this prog program indicates, everybody is blaming the others for for either inaction or wrong action, and that's not how we should uh, mm. do it in a solidary in a solidary way. Okay, so, I will just uh, yeah. read a comment on Facebook. Uh, actually, uh, Giorgio from Italy wrote: For a lot of years now, Italy was the object of this blame game. We were and efficient enough, according to our European partners, having a so-called European action is not possible if we don't have a real Europe instead of this Europe of member states. Do you agree with that? Yes, about these things, I agree with this, and I think what is very important, uh, this is the not only European problem. We pay the price. But the solution must be found on the, on the level of the United Nations, on the level of the strongest countries. 
And in this case, it's very dangerous. We are, as Europe, we are prepared for good economic things, to cooperation between countries. We don't have force. We don't have together foreign policy. We see neither in Parliament you cannot find so easy the same solution. Mm. But on another hand, we have uh, states, we have uh, Russian, and they play the game, they play the war, they play the war of interests, and the price come here. So I think that this problem and this blaming between European country is little it's a problem because we are here, but we should insist yes. on this, that we solve this problem altogether, because if we don't solve the problem in Syria, if we don't solve the problem in Turkey and have agreement with Turkey, mm -hmm. we will not manage this crisis. It's not, and we will blame each other in future also. Okay. I want to come back uh, again in Europe already with the refugees who already arrived. So related to the Western Balkans, which is uh, transit routes for the migrants, yes. uh, especially Slovenia is the main entry point into sure. Australia. And for this, we have a recorded question from Lydia from RTV, Slovenian partner. Hi, everyone. Well, yesterday, Slovenia's foreign minister, Karl Ryavec, said he expects a strong refugee surge in the coming days, numbering from 20 to 30,000 by Thursday at the latest. Then, ahead of the EU ministerial, Interior Minister Vesna Gjorkus Žnidar said she expected additional EU aid in the form of financial assistance and police officers to protect the Schengen border in case the influx becomes too much to handle on our own. With Slovenia being one of the main transit countries in the Balkans and Austria one of the main exit countries, do you think there is a real chance of Brussels offering assistance in a matter of a few days? Thank you both. Yeah, Mr. Fern, uh, Slovenia I also th needs more aid. Yes, I think, and, and, and Austria too, because there is no, not much difference between Slovenia and, and Austria in terms of handling the number of refugees that are coming to our country. But I, I can give you another uh, information which is, which is very important. I talked to the Secretary General of the United Nations the other, last week, and he announced that within, uh, within seven days there will be an action plan for Syria uh, for the uh, for the diplomatic round that's taking place in Vienna, as, as you know, there are mm, uh, yes, week, powers yeah. talking about about Syria, uh, and that is very important because what we have to do now, first and foremost, is settle the crisis, settle the war in Syria. If we settle the war in Syria, the situation will change dramatically. Yes. Mm. And Mr. Bogovic, um, I wanted to say Slovenia rejected uh, Croatia's offer to to help them, uh, like policy officer especially in, a, in a refugee camps there. So, I mean, Slovenia is not, ac they, they're asking for more aid, but they, they're not accepting aid from Croatia. What so, is, uh, sorry, why? Sorry, this is the, the blame uh, game between uh, countries on the Balkan road. In the Balkans, yeah. Is you that you see the see. first blame game between two old friends, Greece and Macedonia, the next blame game between uh, Serbia and Croatia, next between Slovenia and Slovenia, Croatia, we saw also Austria, Bavaria, what is unexpected for us. But, you know, uh, in, in this case of Slovenia, uh, I think that this was not a serious uh, uh, solution from Croatian side. We were in such a situation that uh, situation then uh, from Croatia, they bring by train 2,500 people during the night at 2 o'clock. They didn't neither say that they will bring them and they show the way through the river on Slovenia side. That's a problem. And uh, in this case, uh, we are, as Slovenia, we are a very small country. There is 2 million people. And uh, what is our fear, and I think that this is the realistic fear, if something happens in Austria and especially in Germany, they stop uh, this road. And uh, the German, we do this five minutes later, and it's necessary also to protect Schengen board in Slovenia. If I go to Croatia, it's necessary to show a passport mm. and uh, to have the our ID to go. But there is the mass of people which arrives on the small places with, and there was in the city of 5,000 people, there was during the night 15, 20,000 people. And that's a problem. And we, are, we are afraid and it's necessary that uh, this is the problem because we don't have... Uh, together solution, together answers of this. And the main problem of this is yes, that each country think. blame each other because there is a realistic fear what will happen. It, for example, Germany stopped this, uh, this income of these people and it will happen from Greece to, to, to oh, German right. boards so, on the old race. So what will be the solution now, so, uh, the solution with all the refugees who 
already are in Europe then? I think the most important thing is that the European countries get together, either the heads of states or the uh, interior ministers. I mean, we had the Greek crisis, the Greek financial crisis, and we had, I don't know how many emergency summits, you know, mm -hmm. and now we have a much bigger crisis and there's nothing, you know, there's almost nothing. I mean, we had one or two meetings yes. so far, you know. They don't recognize the enormity of this, of this crisis. And I think that has to be understood. First and foremost, they have to get together, they have to get their act together, and they have to act. Mm. Yes, and, yes uh, your yeah. last word, and then we have to end it up the program soon. Yes, and uh, here is also the, the problem, you know, we can compare this refugee crisis from the 90s when 70,000 of people from Bosnia arrived to Slovenia and stayed in Slovenia. And they, they, they wished to be in Slovenia. They were very happy when they arrived, and they thanks God we are on safe side. When we got this flow of refugees, nobody wants us. Uh, nobody asks for asylum in Slovenia. Slovenia is too poor country for them. And I'm afraid that at the end of the, this road, when we will have, for example, one million people in Europe, we will have a big problem to give, put them back. And another problem, we will, we will have a few hundred of disappointed people. People mm -hmm. which, uh, who has much higher expectation than we can do, uh, manage. So all these are problems. And in uh, countries like Germany, this normally they have traditionally old policy how to integrate people. Mm -hmm. In countries without jobs and uh, new countries, there is no, no, uh, no experience with this. So that there should be also on the commission side and European side fair and uh, open debate and to debate about all these problems, not to see only yourself and your own problems. Okay, I, I will give you the last yeah. word for I have one final sense, sentence, and that is we don't have a refugee crisis, we have a distribution crisis. And that has to be resolved. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both for, for coming here thank in our studio. Thank and you thank invitation. you, you for watching us. Thank you. Bye.